The movie's opening scene introduces us to Naoto Mitsui, an individual enveloped in loneliness largely unnoticed by the world around him. From a hidden spot under a bed, he watches his longtime crush, Chihiro Sasaki. He's been lying there for hours, to the point where his right cheek has gone numb from lying flat against the hard floor and the cold in the room is seeping into his body. As the night descends, Sasaki's husband joins her, unaware of Mitsui's presence hidden under the bed. It's during these tense moments that Mitsui's mind drifts back to a scene from his past. He recalls himself as a child lifting a rock and studying the insects that lived beneath. In these creatures, largely ignored and forgotten, he finds a reflection of his own existence. His thoughts then progress to his senior year in high school, specifically a day when he'd arrived too late to have his photo taken for the yearbook. Even though others who had missed the day for their pictures taken separately and inserted, he was forgotten. No one had bothered to remember him, enhancing his feeling of being unseen like an unnoticed worm under a bed. The story then travels back in time to four months earlier. It's a damp, rain-soaked evening. Mitsui, on an elevator ride home, is struck by a memory flashback of Sasaki from their college days. As a freshman, during a lecture, the professor had directed a question at him. As he struggled for an answer, a soft whisper floated from behind him. To his surprise, someone was saying his name, a sound he hadn't heard in a long time. The voice belonged to Sasaki, who offered him the answer in her notebook. Post-lecture, he expressed his gratitude and invited her for a cup of tea. They found themselves at a local cafe with Mitsui mimicking Sasaki's beverage choice, despite finding it quite bitter. Sasaki shared fun stories from her time at college. Mitsui found himself lost for words, held tight by anxiety. Feeling his nervousness, Sasaki smartly changed the talk to his favorite things to do. Now a little eased, he told her about his passion for caring for guppies, tiny rainbow-colored fish grabbing her attention with complex detail about their care. Sasaki became interested, and she showed a wish to take care of one herself. As a response, Mitsui offered her one of his guppies, and they made a plan for him to bring it to her house. We see Mitsui coming to Sasaki's house carrying a fish tank, thinking back on that moment as the first time he truly felt joy. The flashback ends as Mitsui gets into his apartment, a space that mirrors his unyielding love for Sasaki. He's grown used to the taste of her preferred drink and his hobby of caring for guppies. A common interest with her continues. A lengthy 11 years have passed since he last saw Sasaki. Recently, his craving for her pushed him to reach out to the credit bureau, hoping to find out where she might be. The bureau informs him that Sasaki is married now to a man named Kentaro Hamasaki. After her graduation, she moved to a seaside city near the suburbs. Driven by the wish to see her again, Mitsui makes his way into the city. When he finally lays his eyes on her, he is shocked by how different she seems. The lively and happy woman he once knew now carries a serious look, as if her cheerfulness had faded away. As she passes by him, it is clear that she doesn't recognize him. Blinded by obsession, Mitsui decides to stay closer to her. He rents a shop across from Sasaki's home and sets up an aquarium supply business. The shop occupies the ground floor while the third floor becomes his residence. From this point, he can observe her house with ease. He finds a picture of Sasaki from their college days, the only one he possesses, and enlarges it, pinning it on his wall. He also gets a mannequin dressing it in an outfit identical to what Sasaki wore the day they met. His surroundings seem to hum with her presence, making him feel closer to her. In another flashback, the story takes us back to the day he delivered the guppy to Sasaki's apartment. We see him gently placing the fish in its new home, his eyes locked on Sasaki's shining beauty which mirrors the colorful beauty of the little fish. She asks him to come around often to make sure she's looking after the tiny creature right. Obviously, he's very happy to do that. Leaving the flashback behind, we find Mitsui carefully observing Sasaki's home. He notices that she now has a child, which explains why she doesn't go out very often. 
One night while spying, he catches sight of her in a state of undress and cannot resist snapping several photos. Soon, her husband Kentaro arrives from work and they sit down for a quiet dinner together. But the calm atmosphere is shattered when Kentaro suddenly spills soup on Sasaki and, to Mitsui's shock, starts hitting her. Unable to comprehend the scene unfolding before him, Mitsui watches as Kentaro abruptly pulls the shades down, hiding their domestic life from view. The next morning, Sasaki goes about a routine as if the previous night's events hadn't occurred, sending her husband off to work. As Mitsui goes closer to the house, he spots bruises on Sasaki's face, a painful confirmation of what he had witnessed the night before. Returning to his apartment, Mitsui now understands the change in Sasaki's manner when he had seen her after all those years. Wanting to provide her with some comfort, he decides to leave her a bouquet of flowers each month, along with an anonymous uplifting message urging her to find happiness. He makes sure to leave these tokens on her doorstep only when Kentaro's away. However, when Sasaki discovers the flowers, she discards them immediately, choosing to keep only the encouraging card. In yet another flashback, the story takes us back in time to a defining moment in Mitsui's life, when his mother gave him a guppy offspring. This event sparked a long-lasting fascination with these colorful fish. Since then, he has diligently bred them, resulting in the vibrant 34th generation of guppies that swims in his tank today. One day, Sasaki steps into Mitsui's shop drawn by the array of guppies. Seeing her, Mitsui feels a rush of nervousness but quickly composes himself to welcome her. She shows interest in buying some guppies but is taken aback by the high cost of the tank heater necessary for their care. Seeing her hesitation, Mitsui offers her the heater for free. She accepts his offer but with some reluctance. Mitsui accompanies her home to help set up the fish tank. Once everything is arranged, Sasaki becomes immersed in watching the guppies, and Mitsui takes the opportunity to stare at her. When Sasaki heads to the kitchen to fetch some oranges for him, Mitsui seizes the chance to swipe the house key. Wanting to stay connected to her world, Mitsui plants a listening device inside a lighter and leaves it in her bedroom. He continues to send her flowers knowing they'll likely end up in the trash, also making regular visits to her house under the pretext of cleaning the fish tank. Taking these moments to replace the battery in the hidden listening device, his obsession grows stronger as he starts to go into Sasaki's personal space more deeply. He even takes the step of smelling her bed sheets and laying in her bed. He also gets used to Sasaki's kid being around and he tries to cheer her up whenever he gets the chance. One day after changing the battery of the listening device, Mitsui mistakenly leaves his key on her bed. As he returns to retrieve it, Sasaki enters the house, forcing him to quickly hide in the kitchen. However, Sasaki feels a strange presence in her home. Just as she's about to investigate, however, she experiences a sudden spell of dizziness. Her mother calls to her at the moment, providing Mitsui with the perfect opportunity to grab the key and exit the house unnoticed. One day, a stranger by the name of Misushima steps into Mitsui's shop buying a large fish. Mitsui feels a strange discomfort around him, a feeling that reminds him of his own isolation and loneliness. Shortly after, Sasaki visits the shop to purchase some fish food. Sasaki's daughter displays a lively enthusiasm upon meeting Mitsui, a reaction that takes Sasaki by surprise given her daughter's unusually reserved nature. When Sasaki admits to Mitsui that she's never raised guppies before, he concludes that she must have forgotten their shared past. Hoping to spark a memory, Mitsui offers her the hot beverage that she'd enjoyed 11 years ago. As she enjoys the drink, he watches her, his mind transported back to their college days when she was first tasting it. However, Mitsui grows tired of merely observing Sasaki from a distance and decides to take a bold step. Preparing himself with a diaper for convenience, he sneaks into her house and conceals himself under her bed, determined to be closer to her every day. As night falls, Kentaro returns home mirroring the scene that opened the movie with Mitsui hiding underneath the bed. One fateful day, Kentaro discovers the encouraging card that Mitsui had been leaving for Sasaki. Consumed by jealousy, Kentaro lashes out at Sasaki beating her despite her protestations that the card is merely from a friend. 
Witnessing the brutality, Mitsui is filled with regret and guilt for his actions. The situation escalates when Kentaro drags Sasaki to the bathtub, pushing her head underwater until she loses consciousness. Once Kentaro is soundly asleep, Mitsui emerges from his hiding place, pulls the unconscious Sasaki from the water, and gently dries her off trying to fix the situation he was responsible for. In the subsequent scene, we hear Sasaki narrate her life, describing it as largely uneventful. The only glimmer of joy, she says, comes once a month when she finds flowers waiting on her doorstep. She expresses her concerns to her doctor, explaining her suspicions that someone else might be in her house. Despite her negligence towards the guppies, they remain healthy and well-fed. A fact she finds puzzling is these delicate creatures require regular care. She notes the sound of her daughter's laughter echoing through the house when she's playing alone, a detail that seems… weird to her. Moreover, she's been waking up covered with a blanket, a gesture her husband would never extend. Along with these curious events, she also experiences frequent blackouts, a consequence of the ongoing domestic abuse. One day, guided by her growing suspicion, Sasaki ventures into her bedroom and asks if anyone is hiding in there. Under the bed, Mitsui stays silent, holding his breath. He's been living beneath her bed for months now, only occasionally leaving to breathe fresh air and replenish his food supplies. Mitsui's memories bring him back to a time when they were in college. He had visited Sasaki's place to check on the guppies. Upon his arrival, she greets him at the door, asking him to leave as her boyfriend is inside. But Kentaro, her boyfriend, sees this exchange, seizes Mitsui, and begins to beat him. In a fit of jealousy, Kentaro accuses Sasaki of cheating, and in a rage turns his aggression towards her. Mitsui rises to his feet, grabbing an exposed wire and shocking Kentaro. He fights off Kentaro, forcing him to leave. In the aftermath of this intense confrontation, Mitsui and Sasaki share an intimate moment a memory Mitsui still vividly recalls. Back to the present, Mitsui buys a small stun gun and goes back to Sasaki's house. At dinner time, Sasaki tells her husband that her father is in the hospital very sick with cancer and does not have much time left. She pleads with him to visit her father, but he bluntly refuses, stating that her father will die regardless of whether they visit or not. Sasaki, overcome with anger, slaps her husband across the face. However, Kentaro responds violently, beating her, and then proceeding to harass her sexually. Mitsui, hiding behind a curtain the whole time, attempts to intervene with his stun gun, but he finds himself unable to act. Frustrated with himself, he returns to his own house, and in a moment of despair, uses the stun gun on himself punishing himself for not helping Sasaki. The following morning, he's awakened by Mizushima, who demands an apology from Mitsui because his fish had died due to his malfunctioning heater. Eager to avoid a scene, Mitsui apologizes and dismisses him. Not long after, he spots Sasaki leaving her house from his window and rushes towards her. However, he's stopped by the police. It turns out that Mizushima is a suspected murderer accused of killing his manager's wife. The police need Mitsui's testimony, so he provides his statement and then returns home. Mitsui feels alone and helpless, swept into a flashback of his childhood. He remembers a time when his father abandoned him in a car, and he almost died from a severe panic attack. It is then revealed that all of his treasured moments with Sasaki during college are nothing more than fabrications of his mind. He never had any interaction with her after their initial meeting over hot beverages. His memories of giving her guppies are also false, as she had called him that day to decline, saying she couldn't handle the responsibility. The only genuine memory he possesses is their shared cup of hot beverage at the cafe. Struck by this harsh reality, he lashes out in frustration, demolishing the mannequin he dressed to resemble Sasaki, ripping down her pictures from the wall, and finally realizing that all his guppies have died. Back at the hospital, Sasaki spends a peaceful moment with her father. Suddenly, she discovers a tiny microphone hidden inside her lighter. 
Curious, she speaks into it, only to be interrupted by her husband's sudden angry arrival. He forces her back home where a violent confrontation ensues. Sasaki attempts to protect herself with a knife, but Kentaro wrestles it away and moves to harm her. Just in time, Mitsui intervenes, using his stun gun to incapacitate Kentaro. In her shock, Sasaki questions who he is and why he's intervened. Mitsui encourages her to forget, convinced she wouldn't remember him anyway. As Sasaki attempts to strangle the unconscious Kentaro, Mitsui stops her and taking the task upon himself, ends Kentaro's life. By morning, Mitsui surrenders to the police confessing his actions. As he does so, Sasaki approaches and addresses him by name, just as she had during their college years. Upon visiting his home, she discovers an old group photo from college and finally recalls him. As the movie draws to a close, Mitsui's eyes fill up with tears as he gazes upon Sasaki at the local police station. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you in the next video.